In order for the spread of infectious disease to take place, the chain of infection must be completed. The first link in the chain is a causative agent. This is the harmful germ or pathogen that causes the infection, illness or disease, and examples of this would include bacteria and viruses. The second link is the reservoir or source. This is where the pathogens live and multiply. This could be in or on a person or an animal. Some replicate in an environmental reservoirs such as water or soil. The third link is a means of exit, and this is how pathogens leave the source. For example, pathogens that live in the respiratory tract, so the lungs or the throat, can leave the body through the mouth or the nose with saliva or mucus through a person coughing or sneezing. Other means of exits are broken skin, mucous membranes such as the eyes, via the stomach, and via the intestines and anus. The mode of transmission is the fourth link in the chain. It refers to how the pathogen is passed from one person to another. Contact is the most common route of transmission of the pathogens in the workplace and this can happen by direct contact through touching or indirect contact via equipment. Pathogens such as those that cause influenza and chicken pots can stay in the air for a long time and can be breathed in by other people. The fifth link is the portal of entry. This is the way that the pathogen enters the body of the potential host. Pathogens can enter by coming into contact with broken skin, being breathed in or ingested, coming into contact with the eyes, nose and mouth, or for example when needles or catheters are inserted. The sixth and final link of the chain is the person at risk. The person at risk is the individual that the pathogen moves to. The risk of the person becoming infected depends on such factors as their general health and their strength of the immune system, which is the body's system for fighting germs and microorganisms. Preventing infection means breaking the links in the chain so that the infection cannot spread, but some links are easier to break than others. For example, it's easier to stop a pathogen from entering a person than it is to stop one leaving an infected person. The steps taken to protect individuals and workers from infection are an important part of providing high quality care and support. It is vital to remember that not everybody who carries harmful microorganisms will be ill or show any symptoms, so you must always work in ways that prevent infection at all times. Standard precautions are actions that should be taken in every situation to reduce the risk of infection. These include good hand hygiene, safe disposal of waste, safe management of laundry, and the correct use of personal protective equipment or PPE.